The horrific abuse of teenager Robert Ludwig Jr. and his 8-year-old sister was an open secret in the quiet coastal town of Hickham, Massachusetts for years. But when the system that was supposed to protect Nicole failed, Robert took matters into his own hands and killed his father with an axe in order to protect his sister. The Tragedy in Hingham, Massachusetts On the night of November 17, 1984, 17-year-old Robert Ludwig Jr. had gotten into an argument with his father about his father's drinking. Robert Jr. was tired tired of his father coming home drunk nearly every night, and tired of the beatings that he and his eight-year-old sister had to endure nearly every night. The abuse had gotten so severe that his sister Nicole was removed from the home and put into foster care. But even with the documented abuse, Nicole still had to visit every Saturday. And it was on a Saturday night that Nicole was on a home visit when Robert Ludwig Sr. stumbled inside and was stinking drunk. As the argument went on, it escalated and turned violent. The stress, fear, and anger that was building inside of Robert Jr. for nearly 10 years finally reached its breaking point. And in that fit of rage, Robert found a hatchet and swung. He repeatedly swung the hatchet at his father, and he didn't stop until his father stopped moving. The official autopsy would reveal that Robert Sr. was hit in the face and head six times. With his father now dead, Robert Jr. calmly placed the hatchet next to the corpse, then changed his clothes. As morning approached, he carried his still-sleeping sister Nicole into the car and drove her back to her foster home. Then, he went to work his early morning shift as a dishwasher. When his shift ended, he drove himself to the police station and told them that he had killed his father. When the news broke that Robert Jr. killed his father, the entire town was in shock. Who would believe such a mild-mannered teen was capable of such violence? It was during the investigation that the police learned of the horror that Robert had to endure every day. Those close to the family told police about the awful abuse that Robert Jr. and Nicole went through. When describing Robert Jr., a teacher described him as a no sir, yes sir kind of kid. He was a hard-working teenager and held two jobs to support himself. Robert's ultimate dream was to become a journalist, which led him to become a staff writer for his high school newspaper. And when he wasn't writing, he tutored autistic kids after school. But his altruistic side didn't stop there. He also was a member of several booster clubs and helped fundraise for school events. And even with such a full plate, he still managed to work two jobs. All in all, Robert Jr. was the kind of kid that any parent would be proud of. But to Robert Sr., his son was nothing more than a burden. While Junior was known to be quiet and shy, his father was loud and liked to argue. Robert Sr. had a reputation for being a mean and cruel person. He was also a raging alcoholic and would often take his anger out on his wife and children. It was an open secret that 56-year-old Robert Sr. terrorized his family. The family owned a small snack shop in town and Robert Jr.'s mother Linda endured a living nightmare. Linda would frequently show up at the shop with black eyes and bruises. She brought the children with her to work to protect them so they wouldn't be home alone with her husband. But Linda and her children weren't completely safe at the shop. Robert Sr. would sometimes show up drunk to yell at Linda and the kids. Robert Sr.'s violence also extended to his mother and he would threaten to beat her. By 1978, Linda had had enough. She left Robert Sr. and moved to the next town over in a small apartment. But for the children, their safe haven didn't last. Linda was diagnosed with cancer and died in 1982 at 37. Robert Jr. and Nicole had to return to their father. Without their mother, the abuse he and his sister Nicole suffered escalated. Robert Sr. would frequently come home drunk from his job as a taxi driver and beat his children for any reason he could think of. And when he wasn't beating them, he was telling Robert Jr. wildly inappropriate sexual stories about the people that caught his taxi. And then there were times when Robert Sr. abandoned the children for a week at a time, leaving them to fend for themselves. Because of the physical and sexual abuse from Robert Sr., six-year-old Nicole was taken away by social workers and placed in a foster home in 1982. That same year, Robert Jr. moved to Florida to live with his grandmother. Somehow, 
Robert Sr. obtained unsupervised visitations of Nicole on Saturdays. In 1984, he lured Robert Jr. back to Hingham, claiming he needed his son's help with his sister. And the abuse only got worse. An anonymous family friend said, I don't like to say this about anyone, but the father was scum. He was bad news, a bum. Days before the murder, friends noticed that Robert had become introverted and seemingly depressed. Once the news of the murder was known in Higgum, the community immediately rallied behind Robert Jr. His classmates ran fundraisers and local businesses gave money to Robert's defense fund. The judge who presided over the bail hearing was already familiar with the Ludwig family from earlier care and protection proceedings concerning the siblings. And after hearing the circumstances of the crime, the judge refused to give Robert Jr. bail. Instead, Robert had to spend 20 days in a psychiatric hospital, and once out, he was ordered to return to high school. In 1987, Robert Ludwig Jr. pleaded guilty to manslaughter. He was given a suspended 9-15 to 15 year sentence with terms of completing 5 years probation, and he had to receive psychiatric counseling. Then, he was released into his grandmother's custody. Unfortunately, there is no happy ending in this story. In 1991, 16-year-old Nicole, who was living with relatives in Florida, grabbed a shotgun and took her own life. Distraught, Robert moved to Florida and tried to get a handle on his life and began taking college courses. But eventually, he decided to go back home to Higgum in March 1994 and took classes in filmmaking. Family and friends thought Robert Jr. was starting to move on and was getting better but he never truly came to terms with the death of his little sister. On November 6, 1994, 27-year-old Robert Ludwig Jr. jumped to his death from a bridge on the Golden State Parkway in New Jersey. He was buried next to his sister in an unmarked grave. And once again, the residents of Hingham came together for Robert Jr. and in an outpouring of compassion, raised money for his tombstone. Thank you for watching The Twin Files. Don't forget to like and subscribe. We know this is a heavy video. If you want to lift your spirits and watch something happier, watch this video about a mannequin that was so popular it was invited to the former king of England's wedding.